How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you five presets and just effects that are built into After Effects. They come native, they're no plugins, and they're just going to save you so much time with basic things that you would just, you would spend time, you'd waste time doing in After Effects and actually it's all there ready for you to use. Let's jump in. Okay, so as I mentioned, all of these effects and presets are included in After Effects. It may be that if you're on an older version of After Effects, the presets aren't in there. However, if you're on the latest CC version, then you should definitely have these. It should look identical to what I have in the presets folder. So the animation preset number one is the typewriter effect. I spend so much time making animations for clients where I have to have text that writes itself on and off the screen. And you can do this using the animation within the text properties, which I've, I've done a tutorial on it before. And then you keyframe it all and, and you set your range selector and you, you do all of the work, all of that legwork, when actually there's a preset for typewriter right in the effects panel. So you just come up here and type typewriter. And there it is, animate in typewriter. Select your text layer, double click that, select your layer here, hit U to bring up the keyframes, and then just make it as long or as short as you want. So here, let's make it one second long, and it's gonna type in my text over one second. This, it's brilliant. You can select your keyframes, you can easy ease them so that it starts off slow and finishes slow and speeds up nicely in the middle. And if you really wanna just tweak it afterwards, just hit U twice on your keyboard and it'll bring up that whole animator um, thing. Thing? It'll bring up the animator that's on your text. So if you just minimize and reopen range selector, you'll see there's start, end, offset. There's all of the properties that you might want to fiddle with to get it looking exactly what you want. But all of that legwork is already done for you. You don't have to spend let's say three minutes. I, I'm gonna give it a realistic three minutes of going into that text property, going to animate, uh, coming in here with character offset, and then going down to your range selector, and then keyframing that, selecting what the actual character offset does. So in this case, I guess it would be opacity, and then just going through and changing your opacity, and then adding your start and adding, all of that stuff that I'm going to give that a solid three minutes every single time you do something like this where you want a typewriter effect on your text. Preset does it for you. So then the preset number two that I would say is a big time saver just because it gives something that's enough to please a client and it can look quite cool. Um, if we drop down this animation presets here and go for text, you can actually see there are a ton of different animations for your text here. You've got tracking, scale, rotation paths. You know, you've just, you've got loads of stuff that you can do, but you can also have a ton of animate in and animate out presets. So in animate in, for example, one that I find to be actually quite nice, quite handy is the random word in shuffle. Hang on, let me just stretch that so you can see it. Random word shuffle in. Let's just select our text layer there. Now you see it applies it based on what it assumes your uh, comp size is and all it does is brings your words in in a random order to fit on the screen. Now obviously it doesn't fit on the screen now it's a little bit too small so just hit U twice on your keyboard and then here it says position you just drag it off of your screen and now you have a lovely animation for your text. Instead of animating every single word individually having the position keyframes for that individually and then shuffling them around and then offsetting the keyframes so that the words will come in at different times. No, it's all just contained on that one layer from that one preset. And what's great is it's really easy to duplicate then. You just control D or command D your layer, bring the position down and let's change this to uh, DOD Media Tutorial. All right, let's bring up our keyframes again. Let's just offset those a little bit and then let's just come back to the first keyframe and make sure that the position isn't way too far off. Like there. Now all our words are flying in from different directions. It looks quite good. I like it. And it's done in a matter of seconds. All right, the third preset is one that saves me a lot of time. Um, 
and for many years I didn't really know that it even existed. I, I do a lot of work with infographics where I have a map and I have to animate features on that map. So I'll have like, you know, New York will be the start of something and it'll have some arrows going over to a different place. And I used to make circle shapes that would expand in scale and the opacity would just drop off to nothing. Then I would duplicate that a bunch of times and offset those scale keyframes and opacity keyframes so that it would look like a radar pulsing out. Yeah. Look at this. Radio waves, generate radio waves. Look at that. Now it'll just start generating those radio waves beautifully. But you know, they'll just keep on going and they're not the right size, not the right shape or anything. But what you can do is just drop that lifespan to like four seconds. Frequency, you can increase the frequency of it, drop that expansion down a little bit. You can even change the start and end width. So we can make it so that they really drop down in width from the start to the finish. And now it starts pulsing out radio waves that are going to change in color, change in shape, change in width, change in opacity, and all that done for me automatically in a few seconds. I don't have to mess around with keyframes, with duplicating these layers a bunch of times so that I end up having like 30 little circle layers. I tell you, it took me a long time to figure this one out, but when I did, I just, I was, I was so happy. The great thing about this is that because it's applied to a solid, you can make it 3D and you can rotate it in a 3D space so that that is still working, pulsing out its radio waves in that 3D space. So long as it doesn't go to the very edge of that layer, then you won't have any problems. Okay, so the next preset is something that can be a little bit cheesy, but it is highly, highly sought after, which is to make a kind of glitched out TV, bad TV kind of thing. Now I could go through my footage and essentially just digitally damage it as much as I want with effects and it'll take me a while and it'll take a lot of fine tuning until I'm happy with it. Or I can just type in bad TV and there are three presets which are ready to go for you. First one, bad TV warp, you can see it just kind of pixelates, adds a bit of uh, RGB noise gives this kind of Venetian blind effect that's got bad scan lines. And it's also just applying a bit of a warp to the entire image, which animates on and off. So it's got a kind of a wobble warp on top. It's okay, that looks pretty good. If you were to want to bring this in onto an actual TV and just key out that green there, and then suddenly there you've got yourself a bad TV that does not look half bad. And then you can go ahead and animate that onto a TV screen. You can do whatever you want with it and it'll, it'll look decent enough. Alternatively, the other bad TV effects are, they're okay. I don't think they're as good as the warp one. Like there's old, which again, it's a bit too much. And there's weak, which just, that looks terrible. That looks way too much. But just the fact that that effect is there that you can just add that in quickly and easily to your footage, even if it's just as a guide to give you some kind of idea of what your bad TV footage is gonna look like if you're doing this for a client, just so that they can imagine it as being degraded footage rather than just your you know, 4K, pristine quality, very modern digital footage. Um, that will just help your client figure that out that's what it's gonna look like. The next effect preset, which also can be a little bit cheesy, but again is quite often used, especially for video games, that kind of thing, is uh, night vision. You add that to your layer, lovely. You can even make it into some goggles if you want. Let's make a solid above that. Let's make it black. Let's get a little circular mask. Expand it from the middle to about there. And then let's just duplicate that mask and bring it over here like that and just select both of those and change them to subtract and there you go there's your night vision goggles done in like a matter of seconds okay so then the next preset is using sprites sprites are essentially little preset shapes that you can add onto a shape layer so if i just go ahead and make sure no layers are selected take this circle here this ellipse and just make a random pattern thing. I don't care because I'm not actually going to use that. I'm going to show you. We drop down animation presets 
shapes, sprites. Now, sprites animated, there are some, but they're kind of crap. But the still sprites, they're actually quite good. There are some pretty good things in there. For example, you could have a crosshair in there so that you have a crosshairs for your um, night vision goggles. And you could scale that up and then maybe even drop that width down to one. And there you go, that's a nice looking crosshairs. And that would have required you to create a square which has that stroke on it and then a semi-opaque fill and then you would have had to draw two lines make sure they were all aligned nicely then parent them together so that if you scaled up one it would affect all of them whereas there you literally just double clicked something and it was done and so all of these work as shapes in fact you don't even need to have a layer selected in the first place you can just deselect that object layer and just create a new one by double clicking and you know you'll, you'll just create something new right there like that and of course, the silent sixth, which is potentially the most helpful thing, is that when you make an effect preset or a number of effects on a clip or on anything, just select them all, come up to this little dot 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 up here and say, save animation preset. And you save that preset file to your computer so that you can then come back in and just grab all of those effects in one go, dump them on your clip, saving yourself that precious time that it took you to make that whole thing in the first place once again. All right, thank you for watching. <laughs> it's been a long day. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and hit that subscribe button to get more videos like this from me at DoD Media. I also do some gear reviews over there. I'm just gonna quit while I'm ahead. See you next time.